that she did to find out what it was, who, who needed to know about it. And she, you know, put all these pieces together. Um, but it, it's a multiple, you know, it was made to be uh, printed many times and then circulated and sold to raise money. So my biggest question is, where are the others? You know, why, why did it take so long to find one? And if there are multiples out there, where are they? You know, why, why are they have, they certainly weren't in any of the archives that I went to. Um, and it does make sense that this would have been in someone's home because a, a person would have purchased this in exchange for, you know, some of the money that would then go to the um, sculpture. So it does make sense that it's in private hands. I'm just, I'm very surprised that um, they, they haven't made it into the archives and, and since they haven't, where are they? Great question. Well, I'm going to give uh, the last question to Marion Bennett since she did the find and uh, let her ask if there's any question that you have for Dr. Gold. But uh, let me address one of the questions that came from the chat that was uh, Robert Garland wants to know the age of Alan uh, in the, in the um, Rembrandt, uh, uh, what's his last, Rembrandt Peel's uh, painting. He was in his 60s at that time. Alan was born in 1760. And that was done, I believe, somewhere in the 1820s. Yeah. So that's, I think, I'm pretty sure that's the last painting. Uh, Richard Newman's book, if you want to see more uh, Possible Freedom, you can actually take a look. I think Richard has about three or four different images from when Alan was very young up until this uh, great picture. And this picture hangs uh, as well, a copy of this in the Mother Bethel Museum. Oh, let me throw a shameless plug in for uh, Ann Saunders and the Historical Society. We are now doing virtual tours. We'll post in the chat again. Email us at motherbetheltours at gmail.com, motherbetheltours at gmail.com for groups, uh, group tours, your churches, your friends, family reunions, if you want to do a virtual tour of the museum to learn more. Uh, Marion, Mary, do you have any uh, uh, final question or comments? We'd love to hear from you. Well. Again, thank you so much for letting me be part of this wonderful event. And I want to introduce my daughter, Marie, who has heard me talk about this print now constantly since we uh, brought it up from the car. I don't really have any, any questions for Dr. Gold, but just to thank her for all the research she has done for the um, information we have about the monument, the centennial, and the participation of African Americans in the centennial and how they fought, fought for participation in it. It's it's an amazing story. I can, um, like I say, I don't know, I don't know when it came into my family. I don't know if it came rolled up in a tube when it was first published. In looking at the uh, the frame and the papers behind the print there is an ad in color that I am having framed now, it's at the, the frame shop, that um, advertises a tobacco company. And the date I found for the tobacco company is 1886. So whatever that means, you know, it, was it, um, did they just keep that piece of paper and put it back there in 1900? But when was it framed? I have no way of knowing. I, I don't know if it came into my family already framed. So those are those are mysteries. And everyone who would have seen it is now dead. And I, in all of the uh, time I spent in my grandmother's house, I don't remember seeing it on the walls. So it's it's still a mystery for us. Wow. Well, listen. I want to. We want to thank you, um, and want to thank Dr. Gold as well. I, I wish this is the one part about virtual that you can't do. But trust me, all over the place right now, we are applauding and celebrating the both of you uh, for tonight. And uh, this has been just really wonderful. Before we go back to Ann Saunders, the president of our historical society, who's going to close us out uh, with her final remarks and introduce Reverend Harry Taylor, who'll close us in prayer. Let me say that, um, you know, this is such a small world that uh, Jesse Devine, the Reverend Jesse Devine, uh, was my great, 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 great grandfather, who was an AME preacher, born in Pennsylvania, served in Ohio and Pennsylvania. And after the Civil War, for some reason, uprooted his entire family and went west and ended up in Little Rock, Arkansas. And there he served uh, as a presiding elder 
helping JT Jennifer, who has talked about this presentation and worked alongside with others like Chambers and others in Arkansas, building out the a and Church there, uh, where he served until his death in January of 1876. So he was a part of the fundraising effort.